If I had used MV92 or older, or newer, I got an update to 92. You can't get a CPO warranty now. Maybe five years. If it's less than five years old, you might get it. Make it a bargaining point, you know, settle on a price, say, oh, by the way, I want a CPO warranty. You know, if they say no, start to walk away, they'll grab you and say, okay, we'll give it to you. <laughs> uh, if you're gonna buy a, a used Mercedes, get a complete electronic diagnosis at the dealer with their machine, their Mercedes-Benz machine, and you wanna make sure no fault codes and they sign off on it. And uh, if you can, get the repair maintenance history. It's called the, the uh, VMI, Vehicle Master Inquiry. Now, some dealers say, oh no, that's private. I said, well, print it out and cut off the previous owner's name, okay? I just want the data on the car. And if you talk to them right, they'll give it to you. My dealer, he'll give it to you no matter what. Question? Will that directory address what recalls or service bulletins have been issued on the car, whether or not they've been addressed or not? It should. My, I had a VMI on my 99 and I bought it. And uh, it showed a couple of recalls, uh, two of them, I think, had been performed, and other service bullets had been done. So what do you find out if you suspect or you want to know if there's been a service bulletin that has not been addressed on your car? How do you know if your car, say an older car, should, you know, if that was not done, it should be done? Yeah, the VMI is supposed to log uh, or have the records of all the work done by a dealer only. If you go to Joe the Mechanic down here, it's not going to be in the VMI. Right. So how, that's my, my at the dealer, you can ask, say, have all of them been done? Can they look them up? And they should be able to on that system. So they should be able to look up and say, this is the number of service bulletins issued on your car. There are 10 of them. You've that had were five applicable. addressed. Yeah. yeah. You've had five addressed. You need to address additional yeah. five. But the dealer sure. can tell you that. That's why getting into that, that uh, StarTech info, you can go and look through them. Some of them, you know, they're kind of silly, and they only have... Excuse me. Apply to certain cars, so you, you know, going through the list, you have to see if your car would be affected or not. Because there's some that don't count, you know. and like, well, like the front pulley on some of the V6s, you know, uh, only certain members got that bad pulley, and you had to look at the part number on the thing to see whether or not you could get it. It's kind of hard to get it sometimes, but uh, yeah, you, can, you talk nice to your dealer, your service department, you know, explain that you just like to know before you buy a car from them. It's clean. CDI diesels, uh, they, they're electronic. Diesels are no longer simple like they used to be. They have the same electronic, non-engine electronic. Even the new diesels have a lot of electronics on the electronic injector. <coughs> so they're pretty bad. They're pretty complex. Uh, our low, our low uh, CTA numbers on diesel fuel here <coughs> on the early CDIs was giving them trouble. I think they probably fixed it with the newer injection pumps. Uh, I ought to revise this by seeing where it is, but still be aware of the uh, problem of low cetane fuel. Buy the best diesel fuel you can find. Some stations have number one, number two diesel. Always buy number one. That's higher cetane. The engine runs better on it. I know when I was over in Europe, Germany and had a rental diesel car, I was astounded at how clean it, it was. And when I fueled it up, diesel fuel was almost clear like water. Now over here it's kind of yellow. Maybe they put colorant in it. I don't know. And it hardly smells over there. Our diesel fuel still smells. So uh, <coughs> there's three colors they put in the U.S. diesel. Is it one color is for marine, one yeah, for I know the road, and then one for over the road. So they separate out marine too, then? Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, there are different taxes on it. That's how they. So sometimes at the farm shows, uh, people from the state will go around and take samples out of the farmers. <laughs> yeah, there's a big fine if they catch the wrong There is, yeah. Oh, yeah. They put a lock on your tank, so they can't do that. <laughs> uh, early CDIs, probably sh no more of those around, they got fixed. They had metal particles in them. The, the very first one, the, the, the ejection pump. And, uh, I, they usually were failing within the warranty periods, so Bosch had to get up some new ones, but uh, part of that was, was our American fuel didn't have as much lubricity as they had designed for. So they had to put a better pump on, but uh, most of those cars should have been fixed by now. The early ones. Any That's, other questions in this area? I would like to say that the the um, injector pumps for the older diesels, the '80s diesels, mm -hmm. now that a lot of those are starting to come on the market as used vehicles, um, and very cheaply now, so they're very um, desirable to people that want a long running car. Um, when they switched over to a low sulfur diesel, a lot of those now are having injector pump problems. Yeah. Because people aren't putting in the additives to do it. Yeah. 
Yeah, they're designed for like 500 ppm sulfur, and today is what 15. Yeah. So yeah. I I advise putting an additive in any old diesel yeah. older than 96 or something. Well, we do it to ours regularly. Yeah. Yeah. But that's one of the questions. I have friends now that are looking at these older diesels because they know mine runs so well and has run for so long. Yeah. And uh, the number one thing I tell them to ask the owner is if they've put in additives since they've owned the car in the last five to ten years. Yeah. And if they say no, I tell them to walk away, walk away from it. Yeah. Because the pump do. alone is almost a grand. Yeah. Yeah. Even re uh, rebuilds are expensive, yeah. No, older diesels, uh, 96 back, I would use a, a lubricity additive. There's a number of them on the market. You, auto parts stores have them. Or go to a truck stop. Big, one of the great big old truck yeah. stops. And they always have a store with stuffed animals and over here is additives. You can find good, you can find, you can find anti-algae, uh, algae sides. You can find everything you want for diesels. And uh, question? Uh, just a remark that the uh, Williams diesel sells Detroit's. It says in the old Detroit's to burn uh, about every 200 gallons of fuel, throw in a quarter of gold ATF. That's supposed to help. Yeah, a lot of people use ATF. It's, it's a you know, mineral oil. It's clean, but uh, when, once you burn it all out, then you're back to regular fuel. Well, you got to throw it. Yeah, if you, but if you use a little bit every tank, yeah. but, uh, or, or mainly you want a, a lubricity, and that's essentially what that ends up as being. Lubricates injection pump, but uh, yeah, older. If you get a good older diesel, like well, a friend of mine, he's got a 240D 82. It's only got 60,000 miles on it. And I told him, I said, you better be using an additive with that. We went down, got some bottles. He puts it in there religiously because the, the car is like new, practically like new. I've never seen a, a 123 diesel 82 that looked as nice as that one. You know, as old as it is, but uh, uh, four speed, pretty neat little car, very nice. In any case, yeah, use an attitude with these.